Hello everyone and welcome back to our webinar session here at XM. If everyone can please confirm with me that the sound is okay. Now you can see my presentation screen clearly. All right, everyone. So, over the next two sessions, this and the first one tomorrow, we're gonna take a look at the two main approaches towards trading the markets. Yeah, so on the one hand, we have the fundamental analyst approach, and on the other hand, we have the technical analyst approach. So what we're gonna do over the next two sessions is go through them, get an idea of how these two approaches go about making decisions in the marketplace and then we'll move over in our next sessions to get into more technicals but today let's take a look at the fundamental analyst approach towards trading decisions so starting off from economic forecasting Fundamental analysis, what is it? It can be defined as the study of a country's economic and financial performance when dealing with the forex world, yes? So, dealing with a country's economic and financial performance in order to determine a fair market value and the future direction of its currency. So, in other words, it's about studying the fundamentals out there and getting an idea of what should the price be to reflect these fundamentals? Fundamentals focus on factors that determine the exchange rate, such as the country's economic health, its political stability, and even environmental events. Now, a popular way to gauge the health of a country's economy is through looking at the economic indicators and data releases to do with its currency, which is why every trader should be familiar with them and how they influence the value of a currency. So what we're going to do today is go through some basic macroeconomics of how the different fundamentals affect the value of the currency. So fundamental analysis when dealing with currency pairs such as the euro USD for example focus on how well each economy is doing relative to their counterpart. So in the case of the euro, euro USD for example comparing the European economy to the US economy. Now, if the European economy is performing better than the American economy, then we would expect in due time that the Euro USD would go up in price. So if the Euro USD goes up in price, what does that mean? That the Euro appreciates relative to the dollar and that the dollar depreciates relative to the Euro. On the other hand, if we were expecting that the, the if we expect that the American economy is performing better than the European economy, then we would expect the U.S. dollar to strengthen, which would mean that the price of the euro USD would go down, yes, as the dollar is appreciated and the euro depreciated. So. Our target is to evaluate how well the economies in questions are doing and find which currency will appreciate and which will depreciate. This is the idea behind a fundamentalist. Of course, the information is based on fundamental news, fundamental announcements and macroeconomic indicators to do with the economy. So what are the main macroeconomic indicators that can affect the value of the currency? Well, first and foremost, and perhaps the most important, being interest rates. Then, inflation, gross domestic product, unemployment, and the trade balance. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. Interest rates, perhaps the most important driver in currency price fluctuations, long-term price fluctuations. Interest rate is a very important um, indicators to the appreciation or depreciation of value. Interest rates, perhaps the most important when it comes to the long-term value of the currency. 
massive what affects the major trends in the markets. Now, central banks usually announce interest rates every month with the whole forex market watching closely as to what action they will take. Now, by adjusting the interest rate, a central bank can control the supply of its currency or in other words, directly affecting its value. So one tool that the government has in order to guide the exchange rate maybe where it prefers for one reason or another, yes, one of the tools it has to affect the value of the exchange rate is the interest rate, and it's a very powerful tool. So one of the key factors that influence a central bank's interest rate decision is the growth levels and the inflation rate. But before we get there, let's better understand interest rates. What is the interest rate? Yes, I mean, in the most simple way to put it, if you want to take out a loan, a mortgage to build a house, for example, you have to loan money from a bank with a certain interest rate. Yes, the rate that you will pay the bank for facilitating that loan. Or on the other side of the spectrum, if you want to go and deposit your money in the bank and save your money in the bank, you would be rewarded with the interest rate for saving that money. Yes? So how is the economy affected or the currency is affected when the interest rate changes? Well, if interest rates are increased, what does this mean? It means that it becomes more expensive to borrow money, yes? Since there's a higher interest rate when I go borrow money, now it's more expensive for me to borrow because I'm going to have to pay a higher interest on that money. On the, at the same time, it becomes more expensive to borrow and it becomes more attractive to save since I'm receiving a bigger reward for my savings now through a higher interest rate. Now, these two effects cause the money, the amount of money in circulation to shrink as people start to store more money in the banks. So more incentive to save money, less incentive to borrow money. Yes. Now, of course, that has a huge impact on enterprises as well. If the interest rate is higher now, maybe a company that was thinking of borrowing money to invest in its business is putting that off until a little bit later down the road. Yes. So the higher the interest rate, the less demand there is to take out more expensive loans to invest in companies, for example, because the interest rate is higher. Yes. So higher interest rate gives more incentive to saving money rather than borrowing money. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, in the opposite scenario, if interest rates are decreased, what does that mean? It means that borrowing from banks becomes cheaper. So, uh, Huge enterprise, for example, has more incentive now to go take out that loan and invest in its capital and its enterprise because it's got a lower interest rate. Now, that cost of borrowing has become lower. Also, saving becomes less attractive because the reward for saving through the interest rate is decreased now. So there's less reward for saving, therefore less attractive to save money. So these two together effects cause the supply of money in free circulation to increase. Yes. Now, how does that affect exchange rate? Well, higher interest rates tend to increase demand and value for the currency, while lower rates decrease the demand and lead to a weaker currency. I mean, let's see a quick example of, of how that can happen in practice. I mean, let's say you are... You have your money deposited in a European bank, which is giving you an interest rate of 1%. Hypothetical, of course, yes? And the interest rate in the United States is also 1%. But suddenly, the United States raised their interest rate, let's say, to 2%. So how does that affect the value of the US dollar? Well, you, who has your money deposited in a European bank, earning 1% interest rate, may have more incentive now to move your money from the European bank into an American bank, therefore transferring your euros to dollars to deposit them in an American bank so you can be rewarded with that 2% exchange rate. So in other words, by raising the interest rate, there's a higher demand for the currency as more 
either foreign direct investment or even deposits increase in that currency. Yes. So higher interest rates, more demand for that currency and the value of that currency to increase. Yes. All right. So traders use announcements and economic indicators to better understand the central bank's intentions to changing the rates. Because you see, markets move, not may move, but they actually do move in advance of anticipated rate changes and as in a reaction to actual announcements. So why are a lot of traders watching on the Fed meetings, on the interest rate announcements, even if the interest rate doesn't change? Because they're looking to get hints as to the intention of the central bank of what it is going to do with interest rates. Because the intention alone of raising the interest rates somewhere down the line is enough to push through a big move in the market. Kind of like what happened back in, I mean, we won't take a look at it now, but back in 2015 with the US dollar. At the end of 2015, when the Fed announced its intention of increasing the rates, and we saw a big, huge move in the dollar before any rate hike happened. So the intention of the central bank alone to move the exchange rate is enough to create that trend in the market. Yes. So that's why a lot of focus goes on into understanding the intentions of the central banks to affect interest rates. Now, of course, they don't uh, change interest rates based on how they feel, but how the economy is performing, whether they want to tighten up the money in circulation or increase the money in circulation. So what is going to affect their intention about the interest rate may depend on another few macroeconomic indicators, such as the inflation rate. So what is the inflation rate? Well, inflation refers to the persistent increase in price levels over time of the same kind of product. Inflation is the reason why a Coca-Cola used to cost three cents and now it costs half a euro yes the steady increase in price levels the general price levels over time for the same product so common measures of inflation include consumer price index known as the cpi and producer price index known as the ppi and are usually released on a monthly basis now how does inflation affect central bank's intentions. Well, if inflation is above expectations, meaning that prices are rising at a faster rate than the central bank would like, the currency is likely to strengthen, while lower than expected inflation is likely to weaken the currency. Of course, this may be also ambiguous depending on the state of the economy. But low interest rates and rising growth levels tend to lead to higher prices over time. In other words, low interest rate, meaning more money in circulation, which is pushing the growth levels higher, raising inflation rates, the higher inflation rate gets, the more pressure it puts on the government to hike up the rates. You see? So the faster the economy is moving or growing, the more pressure it puts to raise the interest rates. That's why people keep also a close eye on the inflation levels. Yes? Whereas on the other hand, high inflation levels, as we said, call for a hike in interest rates. So high inflation, what does that do? It erodes the value of a currency. Yes, It decreases the purchasing power that every dollar has. So I mean, just to put it into context, let's say we have a 2% inflation rate. That means that $100 next year is going to buy 98% of the stuff it buys today with a 2% inflation rate. Yes? So it erodes the value of the currency. So therefore, a high inflation rate is considered a very bad thing for an economy. Hence why central banks aim or target to have an inflation rate, a healthy, as they call it, inflation rate, somewhere between 2 to 3%. If inflation starts rising above that, they usually take action to bring inflation back to the desired levels. How do they bring inflation back to the desired levels, of course? 
by shrinking the money in circulation, or in other words, by hiking the rates. Now, when inflation is high, market begins to expect that the central bank may increase interest rates, which starts to directly affect the strength of its currency. As we've said, the expectation of an interest rate hike alone will cause the currency to strengthen. As the market tries to price in the anticipated change in an effort to benefit from the announcement before it's officially made out. Yes, just like the saying that we've repeated the buy the rumor, sell the fact. Yes, I mean, if we just switch over to the monthly chart of the Euro USD, one price move that happened in expectation of an interest rate hike was what was going on here from the beginning of, well, middle of 2014 down to the end of 2015. This move started off with the expectation, well, it wasn't really an expectation anymore, it was more of a matter of when the Fed is going to ra raise the interest rates. But most of this move happened before the interest rates changed. So anticipation alone will kick off the next trend. That is why traders focus so closely on these kind of reports. Now, next macroeconomic indicator that affects the economy, but also affects central banks' intentions. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, the central banks' intentions. So across domestic product, what is GDP? I'm sure you've heard it or thrown around before. Country's GDP across domestic product is the value of all goods and services produced within the economy over a given time period. Usually, given time period may be annual or monthly. It represents the health of a country's economy. Not so much the GDP itself, but the relative change of GDP is something that we like to focus on. Changes in GDP levels are used as a measure of economic growth and how well that economy is per performing on the production side and is usually expressed as a comparison to the previous quarter or the previous year. Rising GDP levels point towards a booming economy. Yes, we're producing more stuff, we're growing, we're booming. So, booming economy, stronger currency. But as the currency gets stronger or as our growth starts growing more, it starts to be accompanied by higher inflationary pressure. Yes? So, in other words, we can't grow too much without getting pressure from inflation. Yes? Now, on the other hand, declining GDP levels signal towards a recession and a weaker economy. Now, GDP, of course, is a major news announcement and is used to reflect on the strength and weakness of economies along with interest rate expectation and intentions of the central banks, as we said, yes? Before we move any further, let's go through a trick question here to see a little bit of our understanding. But we spoke about the central bank's ability to affect the exchange rate, yes, in order to change um, where the economy is heading. Now, what kind of countries may not have that kind of tool in their arsenal? Can anyone think of an example of a country? that may not have the ability to change its own interest rates, therefore affecting the direction of its currency. <laughs> Very good. So, countries in the European Union, for example. I see some other examples there also, but countries in the European Union all have one single currency, yes? And they all abide to one central bank, the European Central Bank. So in these countries, only the European Central Bank can set the European exchange rate or can affect where the value of the euro is going. In other words, countries that decided to sign up to this single, single currency, the euro, have also given up their right to affect their own interest rate because the interest rate is set by the European Central Bank. Yes, so you could say that countries countries that are part of the European Union don't have that tool of changing the interest rate in order to affect the value of their currency. Yes, because 
Interest rates are sent by the European Central Bank for all European uh, currency members. All right, just to clear that up. Next, another important factor. Well, anything to do with the health of our economy. Unemployment rate, of course, yes? How many people are looking for a job in this economy and cannot get one? More people there are, not very good for our economy because we've got resources that we are not using. Yes? So unemployment is an important measure of the health of a country's economy and the pace of its economic growth. Increasing unemployment has, of course, a negative effect on a country's economic growth, while decreasing unemployment is seen as a positive sign for the economy. Rising unemployment signals a troubled economy. And the market may expect that the central bank will reduce interest rates in order to increase the money supply and help boost economic activity. Yes? So not, not enough people employed as much as we like. Central bank wants to increase the money in circulation to act as a catalyst to more growth. So how does it do that? It reduces the interest rates. Yes? Less reward for saving more incentive to borrow money, so more money putting, getting put into the economy. More jobs going out there helps to tackle unemployment. Yes? So you see that employment again is connected to the central bank's intention of what it's going to do about the interest rates. Higher than expected unemployment normally causes the currency to weaken, while lower than expected unemployment usually results in a stronger currency. Now, as well as the unemployment and employment figures, other common related indicators, such as the U.S. non-farm payrolls or the private payrolls or the claimant count, are usually announced on a monthly basis. By far, probably the most important employment indicator and perhaps the most important forex announcement out there could be the U.S. non-farm payroll announcement, as it tends to have the greatest effect on the forex market. Now, the U.S. NFP, non-farm payroll, it represents the change in the number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry, and it's released shortly after the month ends, on the first Friday of the following month. So every first Friday of the month, we have the NFP. They come out at 3.30 server time, and they usually cause a... They usually bring a lot of volatility to the market. Yes, because it's bringing this fresh news about the employment statistics of the U.S. economy, which is part of all our major currency pairs, as we saw. Yes? So any first Friday of the month, 3.30, server time, take a look at what's going on in the majors, give you some experience about announcements in the Forex world. Now, of course, NFP announcements are usually accompanied by high volatility levels, making them more riskier events to trade, hence why more experience is needed in order to take part as a trader in them. And our other macroeconomic indicator is, of course, trade balance. This number represents the difference between the value of goods and services that our economy is exporting to other economies, between the difference and the value that we are importing from other countries. Yes? So what are we selling outside versus what are we buying from outside? The difference between those two. Now a surplus occurs if the value of exports is greater than the value of imports. If we are selling more stuff than we're buying, e.g. China. And a deficit occurs if the value of imports is greater than the value of exports. In other words, if we're buying more stuff than we're selling out, we have a deficit, e.g. U.S. of A. Now, it is in a country's interest, of course, to export more than it imports, therefore generate money that can be used to further its growth. Now, this figure is usually released on a monthly basis. A greater than expected figure tends to be good for the currency, while a worse than expected figure tends to be bad for the currency. So, economic indicators which, of course, there's many based on the macroeconomic values that we saw, but how do we benefit? Well, economic indicators help a trader consider trades in the context of economic events, and through this, help him understand, understand price action, price moves better during these events. 
Now, of course, you do not need advanced knowledge of economics to make use of an economic calendar, as not every single announcement must be analyzed in depth. For example, by following GDP indicators, or inflation, or employment strength, one could anticipate market volatility, identify potential trading opportunities. Trading fundamentally or not, it is good to be aware of what and when is announced, as news can act as a catalyst for price trends. So whether our decision-making process for our trades is going to be based on a fundamental model or not, we still need to be aware of what the major announcements are going to be. And this is something I like to do every Sunday night. So before the markets open up on Monday, whether my decision-making is going to be affected by these announcements or not, I want to be aware of what is going to be announced on the main currency pairs that I'm trading during the week. Now, how do we do that? We open up our XM webpage. And we go up here to where it says research and education. We go to economic calendar. Now, once we're at the economic calendar, we've set the time according to our time zone. What we can do is filter for the most important announcements out there. So I come out down to the filter, filter to three bulls, and there I have all the most important announcements of the week. So what do I see already today? Retail sales in the Australian market and construction PMI for Britain have been released. Yes? Also, I see what is upcoming for the rest of the week. Now, if there's a major announcement, especially in one of the securities that I am trading, then I definitely want to be aware of that. Yes, whether I have a plan to, um, to let my decision process be affected by that or not. It is always good to be aware from the beginning of the week what's about to go down. Yes, not only because the effect it may have on the price, but because, as we said, the news acts as a catalyst to price moves. So I also want to be aware of when is most likely this market going to move. Yes, the market that I am trading. So economic calendar, very important resource to take advantage of. All right. So, you should also know which economic indicators have a greater impact in terms of trading. And we'll split them into three type of categories here. For, so, for example, we've got leading indicators. Leading indicators change before the economy starts following the new trend. In other words, these things change before the economy has started to change. They predict economic changes, such as stock market has always been seen as a leading indicator for a country's economy. Manufacturers, new orders, consumer goods, business confidence, always an important one, and building permits. Yes, For example, building permits would start to slow down before we've seen changes in the economy, Yes, warning us of what's upcoming. Now, then you have lagging indicators. Lagging indicators change after the economy has already started following the new trend. In other words, they confirm the economic changes, such as unemployment or GDP. And then we have coincident indicators, which as their names suggest, tend to coincide with changes in economic trends, such as the NFP that we saw earlier, industrial production, manufacturing, and trade sales. But also, news moves the market, as we've said. Monitoring economic calendar can help keep updated with the most important news announcements and press releases. But here's the catch. Depending on the current state of the economy that we're analyzing, the relative importance of the different announcements may change. Yes? So although we've said that interest rate is a very important driver in um, currency price differentials, the, the, although interest rate is one of the most important, 
at this moment in time, it might not be what people are focusing on because it might not be the thing that can affect change. So what is the most important thing that can affect change now is something that is changing. Yes. For example, unemployment may be more important this month than trade or interest rate decision. Therefore, it's important to keep on top of what the market is focusing on at the moment. What is the market? What's the next bit of information the market is waiting for? For example, maybe no interest rate change is expected. So there's not so much focus on the next meeting of the Fed. But maybe the Fed is waiting on the inflation rate to see how soon it should change those interest rates. So more people are focusing on how fast the inflation rate is growing. If you sort of understand what I mean here. So depending on the economic environment the country is in, the relative importance of each announcement may be different from time to time. So based on all those macroeconomic indicators, now let's see the key announcements which are connected to each macroeconomic indicator. For example, we talked about GDP, which is its own announcement gross domestic product gets released quarterly gets released monthly let's see on that economic calendar is there a gdp announcement from anyone this week there is japanese yes for the yen gdp of the first quarter so that's where we're going to see those kind of announcements so gdp indicates economic growth of the country as we said determined by product output services income and expenditure. GDP is often correlated with living standard. Non-farm payroll is to do with unemployment, as we said, yes? Monthly report released by the U.S. Department of Labor providing statistical data for the current state of the U.S. labor market used to forecast future levels of economic activity. Then we have the actual unemployment rate, percentage of unemployed people measured by the ratio of people who are out of work and willing to work as opposed to the total number of people in the workforce other announcements are the cpi connected to inflation as we said consumer price indexed cpi is used as a measure of inflation as it reports price changes in over 200 categories so we take the same 200 not 200 200 different categories but for example we take a pas basket of goods that contains 100 products and find the value of those 100 products back in the year 2000 and the price of those products in 2018. Of course, same exact product. What is the difference in the cost of those products? That difference is what we'll find as the inflation rate. Of course, remember, when we're dealing with inflation, we're talking about the same kind of product, not a product that has increased in price because of a technological advancement or because of a better product. Yes. Good example, as we said before, was a can of Coca-Cola. Used to be five cents back in the day. Yes. Now it's almost a euro. So that's inflation. CCI, Consumer Confidence Index, measures consumer confidence, which is a many times seen as a good indicator for where the economy is going yes the expectation consumers have about the future pmi purchasing managers index indicates economic activity shows the percentage of companies businesses and employees in charge of goods and service acquisition and retail sales monthly report that measures consumer expenditure an essential part of the gdp in the United States. As a timely indicator of broad consumer spending patterns, it can be used to assess the immediate direction of the economy. People spending more out there or spending less? Yes? Durable goods orders connected to international trade and trade balance measures the difference between imports and exports of all goods and services. Napalm Index, National Association of purchasing manager measures economy in general and the manufacturing sector in particular sums up the survey for over 250 companies in the u.s and it calculates data on production new orders and employment and another popular one is the ppi producer price index frequently used economic indicator that measures 
average changes in selling prices received by domestic producers in the industries of manufacturing, mining, electric utility, and agriculture. And the Tankan, which is a um, Japanese indicator for the yen, is a quarterly business poll issued by the Bank of Japan on the status of the Japanese economy. It affects the currency rate and stocks significantly, so it's considered as a major financial indicator for the Japanese economy. So, those are the announcements. Those are what we keep an eye on based on the macroeconomical concepts that we saw at the beginning. So how does news trading work? Well, of course, there is a difference between the fundamental approach to trading and news trading. Fundamental approach would be more about creating a model and understanding all these macroeconomic events that we've seen based on all the information that we have out there from these announcements. What should the price of the euro USD be? to reflect the news that is out there. That would be a fundamental approach. So what price should this market be at to reflect all the information we have out there? Now, of course, a part of that fundamental approach is also news trading. But news trading focuses more about making a short-term trade, usually, before or after a news announcement. Or in other words, trying to benefit from the added volatility that comes into the market around the time of news announcements. So how does news trading work? Well, news matters. And the proverb that no, no news is good news never applies to the forex market. Well, maybe sometimes. But news makes the market moves, especially the forex market. And it makes it move very, very fast. News trading means that you trade a foreign currency or a currency pair right before or right after an economic indicator news announcement has been published. Now, after such announcements, you can expect market prices to fluctuate. That means to either move up, down, or even both, up and down. Yes? Now, trading news through currencies can be very, very exciting. That's why it's very, very attractive. But why is it exciting? It's exciting, of course, because it's very volatile. So exciting also translates to risky. So it's very exciting because it's very risky. It's risky due to the high volatility that is triggered during news events. So risky, exciting. What does that mean? In order to do it properly, you should probably build some experience on it. Yes? Trade some news announcements on a demo account or with small position sizes in order to get an idea of what the effects can be during news announcements. Now, of course, you can locate all the announcements on the economic calendar as we saw earlier. But if someone is to trade the news, not so much I mean the fundamental approach, but trading the news specifically, one can either do it proactively or reactively. So news releases provide fresh information about how the economy is performing. And if the data surprise is large enough, the market reaction can last up to from a few minutes, a few hours, or even a few days. But what is the key word that we just said? If the data surprise is large enough. So I want you to pay attention to this. Because sometimes, let's say we have a news announcement. Let's say, for example, GDP. And let's say the GDP of the United States of America is increased. Now, someone may expect that the US dollar appreciates. But the news comes out and nothing happens. Yes? Why? Well, a lot of times... It's not only an increase or a decrease that can bring that volatility in, but it is a surprise from what is being expected. Now, of course, we're going to speak more tomorrow about how markets price in information. But if an announcement happens as expected, then most likely that information has already been priced into the market, meaning there may not be a lot of volatility. Yes? So when does 
the news announcement bring a lot of volatility in when the data is not in line with what is being expected. That is when the biggest price fluctuations happen. So sometimes it's not only about a good announcement for a certain currency, but is it better or worse than the expectation? Yes. So it's like that the interest rates we said, yes. So the market moved a huge distance in expectation of that interest rate changing. Well, when the interest rate actually changed, there wasn't much more decline. In fact, the market was already in a recovery process because it had already priced in this information. So what we're trying to say here is that a surprise of the data is what brings more volatility rather than a good or bad number. Now, economic releases, as we've said, can be traded either proactively or reactively. How are those two approaches different? Well, trading proactively involves taking an educated guess on whether the data will surprise to the upside or the downside and placing a trade before the announcement. In other words, trading proactively involves well, making an educated guess about what the outcome of that announcement is to be. Now, whether that is um, studying previous announcements such as this one and looking for some kind of trend in the previous data to get an understanding of what may happen, or for other fundamental reasoning, proactively involves choosing a side, let's say, before the announcement. So. We choose a side, yes, dollar side, euro side, open up a position before the market news comes out, and then let the news happen and see what happens and pray. <laughs> On the other hand, we have trading reactively, which implies letting the announcement come out and then making a decision. So it involves placing a, placing a trade after the announcement is released. Now, of course, this removes the need to guess the economic data, but it also removes that initial price movement that will happen the first few seconds that the data comes out. So reactively is more about waiting for the data to come out as expected, maybe, for the market to choose a direction if the outcome of that announcement is uh, clear to one side. Letting the market choose a direction and then jumping onto that direction and following the market. So those are the two ways of trading the news. Placing a trade before the announcement and letting the market do its thing. Or waiting for the announcement to come out and after that um, uncertainty has passed by, then take a position and be hoping to be part of the reaction of the market that follows after the news announcement. And that is what we've had today with regards to the fundamental analyst approach to trading the market and a little bit of information about how to trade news announcements. All right, so that's all we've had for today in our fundamental analyst approach. Let's see if we have any questions regarding some of the information we've seen today or more in general about um, the approach. Of course, webinar notes, yes, will be sent to you, especially for my new attendees which may not be um, aware, but webinar notes are sent to the email you use to register for the webinar, um, usually around 24 hours after our webinar is completed. Does the trading time frame matter when trading the news and fundamentals? Of course it does, yes. Fundamental news, of course, take time to develop. Uh, not only that, but if we take it from the approach of trading the news, yes? Um, someone, for example, trading a higher time frame 
may not be so affected by the intraday moves that happen throughout the day. While volatility, extra volatility comes into the market with a news announcement, volatility will not be so big to affect a trader trading on the daily or the weekly time frame, for example. Yes. So someone trading on a much higher time frame will be more insulated from short term fluctuations within the news. Whereas someone trading on a very short time frame will be greatly affected by the announcements, therefore has to keep a closer eye and may even think of how he will behave around new annou news announcements, whether that is um, taking other positions or uh, closing partial positions in order to take less risk associated with the event and all these kinds of nice things. So trading time frame does Effect the higher the trading time frame, the less it will be affected by short term um, fluctuations due to news. How to read the economic calendar to re news release to predict an increase or a decrease in a currency? Well, as we said. The fundamental model based on the direction of the economy. If the economy is expected to perform better or if the economy is expected to perform worse and relative to the other currency that we're trying to trade it. What do we mean by the context of this lesson? I don't understand. Right. Here's a question. How do you incorporate fundamentals with technical analysis? Well, this depends on each trader. As we said, we've got two main approaches, the technical approach and the fundamental approach. Yes. Some traders focus on one, some traders mix them. Now, what we do, of course, the older attendees uh, know our advice on that, don't they? What about the new ones? All right, we'll repeat it for the new one. So this is our motto on how we go about this, yes? When the fundamentals and the technicals do not agree between them, we choose to follow the technicals, yes? So we follow the technicals, and then we read the fundamentals the next day as a bedtime story. Now, when the fundamentals and the technicals do agree, Again, we choose the technicals, so we follow the technicals. However, this time, because they both agree, we may be more confident of our decision, therefore enabling us to take a bigger position sides when they are in agreement. But generally, we follow the technicals. Of course, if you want more information about that and the technical analyst approach, that is what we're going to be going through tomorrow. Yes? Of course, we may also go through a couple of reasons why fundamentals may be not so accurate in predicting future moves. Yes, but of course that's a longer story and we're going to discuss more about that tomorrow um, and the concept of technicals versus fundamentals. Is it a good idea to trade exotic pairs? Well, if you know what's about to happen, yes? So, as we said, what's the difference between exotic and the other ones? They're more volatile because they're more sensitive to government changes, to political changes, to economic changes. And they also have a much bigger spread. So, the bigger spread, it affects us if we're trading them short term. Yes, because um, short term means smaller moves. If we have a large spread, it means we need, I mean, most of the move, a lot of the move, it's a higher transaction cost. Then again, if we're trading exotics on a longer term time frame, then that increased transaction cost uh, may not really affect us that much when we're trading long term. With all the news around the world, someone is saying one must be really attentive. Well, either that or not attentive at all. Yes. I mean, unless you have a way of making sense of the news, and finding a way to make it a methodological way of how to make decisions based on the news announcement, 
then you're probably better off not listening to the news anyway. Yes? Of course, that doesn't mean to have a blind eye as to what's going on in the world and which war might break out. It's important to be aware of what's going on on the globe. But how much you let fundamental news affect your decision-making process as far as your trading strategies, that is according to your methodology. All classes, all modules are repeated every two weeks. So exactly what we did today will be repeated in exactly two weeks on the 18th of June. Well, fundamentals is always a good story to find out after the events what happened when it happened. Yes, but here's the thing. Why something happened has got nothing to do with what we're trying to do. Yes, so I see a question here. Someone's asking me what happened to the USDCHF back in 2015. All right, 2015 was the year that we saw the exchange rates or the interest rates changing. But here's my question as an answer to can you explain what happened on USDCHF in 2015? My answer was, what does it matter? Yes? And that is the key thing about fundamentals, that usually the market prices these things in before they've become known to the public. That's, of course, something we're going to discuss tomorrow. But the fact that something is about to happen or that something is happening is much more valuable than as to why. It's happened. Yes. Of course, we're going to deal more with this when we speak about trends tomorrow and the technical analyst approach. Yes. But as far as the USD Swiss franc is concerned, looks like it was in a range for 2015 there. Yes. There we have it. Ah, if we're talking about that drop, that must have been around the time that the hike happened. I think it was December 14. My memory is running tricks on me now. What should typically happen when the data release is the same as the expected or the previous? Well, if it's the same as expected, maybe nothing happens. Maybe there's a bit of volatility, market moves up, moves down, and ends at the same place. But again, this is ambiguous to say because it depends on the state of the economy, and it depends what we mean by expected. So a lot of times the market will react according to how traders um, perceive the new bit of information that came to market. Yes. So what we're seeing in those moments after an announcement is actually how traders are reacting to this news rather than how exactly this news affects. Yes. So it, it very much depends on the perception of the traders at the time the news is announced and their perception, of course, depends on the environment that the economy is in. What are the economy's problems at this time? What is the economy trying to um, trying to assess about the next step. So back to what is the economy focusing on right now? Even if the price comes out, the announcement comes out as expected, that might have a deeper meaning or maybe not in the other macroeconomic indicators. Yes. Like we said, maybe, maybe inflation is getting very high and that affects the interest rate. All right, what else do we have? So, of course, that was the fundamental approach, which we will be discussing. Also tomorrow, some of the differences between the technical analyst and the fundamental analyst approach, and that may help um, clear up the two approaches better, but also clear up how the two different approaches go about making decisions, whether it's in a fundamental way or a technical way. 
And we're going to see the contrast between the two approaches. All of this, of course, tomorrow when we discuss the technical analyst approach and we will be touching again on the fundamental. Um, but to make sure you watch that webinar, sign up Forex webinars. There it is, tomorrow's schedule, technical analyst approach. What are BBTN indicators? All right, scrolling through to see if there's anything else um, that we may have not have answered. Now, if you have your methodology, then maybe best not to let all the news that are going on around the world affect you. If you know what your task to do is in the market, if you know the decisions that you're going to be making, then why do you need CNN or NBC confusing you? Yes? So, the more you know about what you're trying to do, the less you want to hear about what everyone else is trying to do. Yes? Because you are driving your own car. They're not driving your car. All right. So, let's see if there's any more final questions before we close up for today as we said increase in interest rates higher demand for the currency as we said intentions of an interest rate hike alone will cause a move in the currency as we saw in that 2014 chart all of this was based on the intentions of central bank to start hiking the rates. Yes? All right, let's close off with this last question. So last question, is trading short term the best thing for beginners? I'll answer that by saying the best thing for beginners is education. The best thing for beginners is to keep on learning. So get a good idea of how this game works, of what I'm trying to do, and then start risking big money. I mean, too many people at the beginning are trying to learn a method to make money. But unless we know the process that we're trying to do, unless we've done it over and over again, there's no reason to risk the house, is there? So what's the first thing that we got to make sure to be able to do? Know what we're doing. In order to know what we're doing, got to educate ourselves. Yes? We got to learn all these different modules and learn to put them together. So before you even think about the possibility of making money, you got to learn. Learn to earn. Yes? No point in taking extraordinary risk before you've built the confidence in yourself to know that you know how to do it. So before you know how to do it, the job is learning how to do it. Any discussion about money is way too early. Yes, I hope that puts some light as to what we're trying to do here and, and what the process is. Yes, I mean, it's like discussing about buying a Ferrari and you can't drive yet. First you learn how to drive, then you think about what car you're going to buy. Yes. People, another question, people say that Forex market is very manipulated. Is that true? Well, things are relative. Um, the fact that $5 trillion go through this market on any given day makes it very, very harder to manipulate. Yes, that does not mean that manipulation does not exist, but you could say that um, maybe less manipulated than a certain stock. Yes? especially a small cap stock, for example, where a billionaire can come in and more easily manipulate it. With the kind of volumes that are going around in the Forex world, only very huge players such as major, major funds, central banks would be able um, to maybe move the market a little bit to their liking. But whether the market is manipulated or not, 
does not really affect us as traders because at the end of the day, if it's been manipulated, we are looking to jump into that manipulation that's going to create a trend, yes? Indicators, we're going to see them as we go through the week. Of course, any information regarding any of our tools, any of our um, mentoring products, anything to do with these webinars or any kind of communication you want to get through us, send over an email here to info at Shadepedia. Let them know um, what you want, if it's an indicator, if you want to get in touch with someone, if you want to leave a message for someone, whatever it is, info at Shadepedia.com. Send them that email. Let them know you were in today's webinar if it's something about today. Um, and they will forward it to the appropriate person in each in each case. So any kind of inquiries, any kind of information, info at tradepedia.com. Any more information about the kind of things that we do, you can find them at www.tradepedia.com. All right. Yes, of course, just to finish off that little chapter I said about education, which I've seen as a little light bulb for a few of you. Of course, it makes sense, like a few of you are saying. Um, just to put that into a little bit of context, as I said, first of all, it's educating ourselves. Make sure we know what we're trying to do before we invest a lot of money in it. Now, you all, everyone always has the option of opening up a demo account to do everything without risking any real money, yes? However, my advice as far as a demo account is concerned is definitely open up yourself a demo account, definitely have a demo account to learn the basics, to learn your way around the platform, to learn your way around putting in positions, to learn all of these nice things that you're going to need to learn, which let's call it kindergarten, yes? So you need a demo platform in order to attend kindergarten. Now, once you graduate from kindergarten and start getting a bit of an idea of what this game is all about, I would advise you to open up a real account with a small investment. Now, small investment is small relative to the big amount of money you're planning to invest when you know everything, yes? Now, why do I advise a small real account rather than a demo account when you start getting the hang of things? Because although the demo um, has all the same characteristics of a real account, the only real difference is the real money. Now, the one thing that a demo cannot prepare you for, as opposed to a real account, is the psychological effects that real money on the table will have. And it's one of the most important parts of trading. So after someone gets the hang of things, I always recommend opening up a small trading account, which will enable you to also get the feeling of what it's like trading real money and how your emotions can affect your trading decisions, which is the one thing that a demo cannot do for you. Now, of course, we're not going to open up, mortgage our house and put that all on a trading account in order to learn. Yes. But we need some kind of money there, which is significant for us to, well, first of all, pay attention to it. Yes. You don't put any money in. You're not going to pay attention to it. Second, if you don't put any money in, you're not going to learn from your mistakes because some people need to pay in order to learn from the mistakes. You can make a mistake for now. It'd be free. You don't learn it. You make the same mistake and it costs you money. Suddenly you learn it. All that is connected to the emotional side of the game, which is the only thing that a demo cannot do for us. So my advice would be, after you get the hang of things, open up a real account with a small um, account relative to what your account is going to be when you make it all the way through the journey. And that is going to help you get closer to the actual procedure of what we're going to be doing in the market. But of course, as we said, that is part of the first stage, which the first stage is all about education, learning, not only learning what we're going to do in the market, but part of this procedure is also learning ourselves.
and learning how to control ourselves better, learning where our shortcomings are and how to tackle those shortcomings. And if anything, I'll leave you with this today. Your biggest enemy out there when in this game is yourselves. You're not trading against the rest of the world. You're trading against yourself. But here's the bright light or the silver lining in this case. No one knows yourself better than you. So if there's anyone that can trick yourself, it's you. It's just a matter of discipline. So that's what we got to do. And that's it for today's fundamental approach towards the market. So very important, if you haven't seen it before, technical analyst approach towards trading the market is tomorrow, 4 p.m. server time, where we're going to go through some of these things in a bit more detail. But technical analyst approach to trading the market is very important module going forward. What we're going to transfer, what we're going to try and transfer to you is the mentality that we need and what we are actually trying to achieve here as the technical analyst approach. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for coming to today's webinar. Thank you very much for being part of today's webinar. Thank you for your comments and your interactions and making sure that these webinar sessions remain interactive so that you and me can get the most out of them. Of course, we are going to be here again tomorrow at the same time. So until then, may those wonderful green pips find their way into your pockets and stay there. But Actually, because there's more newer traders in this room, may you learn a lot of new things this week in your trading education. So I'm going to be here to try and guide you through that. All right, everyone. So thank you very much and uh, hope to see you all again tomorrow. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye from me. Ciao, ciao.